Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought we'd make this cute little shadow box card. And my inspiration is the children's book, The Tortoise and the Hare. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be using mostly Lawn Fawn products today. And we're going to start off with this uh, shadow box die set from Lawn Fawn. We're going to grab this panel here and this frame as well. And these two little borders. And again, this is the shadow box die. We're also going to be using the Lawn Fawn sticky note paper and the Bristol Strathmore smooth cardstock in the 100 pound weight. We're going to die cut two of those panels, one with the frame and one without. And then on the Bristol smooth, we're going to die cut these two borders. And these two borders have this beautiful stitched edge on them, and they have little tabs on either side so they will fit right inside our shadow box. So that's my solid uh, piece there. And then the second one I'm going to run through again and center this frame. I'm holding it down with a little bit of iCraft purple tape, and I'm going to run that through. So we'll have one with the frame cut out and one without. And then I'm also going to take these little trees. I just want the two, uh, the smaller and the, the middle size of the uh, foliage on the tree. And then I'm going to die cut quite a few of these. And again, I'm using that Bristol Strathmore paper to do this. So now I have all of my little pieces here. And the way the trees work is that's going to sit right on top of the foliage part, the little trunk there. Now I'm going to take the picket fence border, again using the Bristol Strathmore paper, and I die cut that. So we're going to go back to these stitch borders now. And using the Distress Oxide Gather Twigs and Ground Espresso, I'm going to ink up this border with the Gather Twigs all the way around. Just one nice coating of that. And then I'm coming in with the ground espresso over the top area of that border. And then I'm just going to blend the two together with the gathered twigs. And I did decide to come back in across the top of that border with a little bit more of the ground espresso. Now I wanted to make this look like a little dirt path. So I'm putting a little bit of that ink right on my acrylic block. I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water from the Distress Sprayer. And then taking a wet brush, I'm just going to get that ink a little bit wet. And then I'm going to flick it down onto this cardstock. And it's going to create this beautiful spatter. So I let that dry, and you can see there you get this beautiful texture. Now with the mowed lawn and the Lucky Clover, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So we'll have one grassy border and one uh, like a dirt path kind of a border. So I laid down the, the uh, lighter color first, and then I'm coming in with the Lucky Clover. And again, using my lighter applicator, I'm blending those two together. I'm going to do the same thing here for the, sp the splattering technique. I'm going to... Uh, apply the ink to the acrylic block, squirt on a little bit of water, and then just kind of spatter that paper. Again, just kind of flicking it off the side of the acrylic block and creating a little bit of a spatter. And I let that dry as well, and you can see how pretty that looks. So now I'm going to grab my bone folder here and just press out these two little tabs. And there is a score line there, so you'll know exactly where to press those. And then I want to fit this little fence behind here. So I'm just finding the right spot on the fence, and I'm just going to cut away the excess. Notice I only want it to be the length of from basically from the score line on that border to the other score line. So it'll fit right behind there. And then I'm going to take the pumice stone and just add a little bit of uh, color to the tops of that fence. And I'm not even sure you can see that here. But it does add a little bit of color, a little bit of a shadow. So now you can see that border fits right in between those two score lines. And I'm going to take my Lawn Fawn glue tube and apply some glue and just put that right into place there. Now for the two panels that we cut, I'm going to follow those score lines and fold everything with my bone folder. 
just getting it ready here. It's very easy to do, and now you can see how that will fit together. But for that back panel, I wanted to create a little sky. So I cut a panel three inches by two and a half inches out of the Bristol Strathmore paper. But I wanted to create like a, a kind of a pretty sky for the background. So I'm using squeezed lemonade and abandoned coral. Again, the distress oxides. And I'm going to apply that squeezed lemonade all over this panel. And then I'm going to take the abandoned coral and I'm going to apply that maybe about, I don't know, halfway up. Well, a little bit more, maybe three quarters of the way. And then using the squeezed lemonade applicator without applying any more ink, I'm just going to blend those two together. And these two blend together so beautifully. I love this combination together. Now, I thought it needed a little more texture, so I'm going with my Distress Sprayer. I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water here, blot off the excess, and you can see that we get this pretty distressed sky. So now using the Lawn Fawn 1 quarter inch tape, this is a nice heavy duty tape, perfect for doing these little boxes and things. I'm peeling off the uh, tape on that, that end tab, and I'm connecting these two panels together. So while this is not all connected together, I'm going to put my sky in the background there. So I'm applying more of that Lawn Fawn tape, and then I'm just going to center that on that back panel and press that into place. Now I have my two borders here, and I'm going to fold this the tab on this grassy border as well. And I want to make sure that I line these up properly. And I want to make sure that that uh, little dirt path is low enough so that it won't be, uh, so that the bottom of it will be hidden behind that front panel. So I'm going to apply some tape to either end of those two little tabs on this on this border here. And I want to make sure I have tape all the way end to end just to make sure that it stays in place. So I'm putting a little more than I need and then just cutting away the excess. And now I want to remove, determine exactly where that uh, border is going to be. And then I'm going to remove the tape backing there and position this down. So I'm just going to push that tab right onto that back panel. And then I'm just double checking it to make sure that it's in the, the, the correct position. And now I'm just going to lay that grassy border just behind it, but I want to make sure that it's going to be seen from the back. So I'm lifting it up a little bit here. I'm marking it with a pencil just to make sure that when I lay it back down, I put it exactly where I want it to be. And now I'm going to make sure these are nice and straight. And I'm going to peel the backing off the tape on those two little tabs. And then all I have to do is fold that right side of my box in towards the center and pick up those two little tabs. And on this last tab for the box, I'm going to place some more tape. Again, making sure it's end to end. And then I'm going to remove the backing. I'm just double checking to make sure everything folds nice and flat here. And then I'm going to remove that backing and connect this box together. Just making sure I line everything up perfectly here. And so now you can see that that box will fold flat either way. So now with the mowed lawn and the lucky clover, the exact same colors we used to do the grassy border, I'm going to use those to do my little tree uh, foliage as well. So I'm doing the uh, mowed lawn all over and then the lucky clover just down towards the bottom. And then I'm going to use that applicator for the mowed lawn just to blend those two together. I did the same thing for all the other pieces. And again, I'm going to do the same thing we did before for the grass, applying that ink directly to the acrylic block, adding some water, and just spattering those pieces as well. And this spattering effect adds a lot of dimension to these uh, little pieces here. 
So again, going back to the exact same colors we used for the little dirt path, the gathered twigs and the ground espresso. We're just going to apply a little bit of ink to these little, uh, the little trunks of the tree here. Now I just want to connect these together, so I'm going back to that glue tube. And I'm just applying a little bit of glue, and we're going to glue all these little pieces together. And I just think those little trees are adorable. Now I'm going to position these on my little borders here. I decided to use two of the large trees and two, I'm sorry, two of the medium sized trees and two, three of the smaller trees. There is another size, the largest size, which we didn't use at all on this little box. I just thought maybe uh, size-wise, the, the medium and the small would be the best. So I'm just going to continue attaching those. And that one there, I wanted it to look taller than it really was, so I hid it behind that little fence post and lifted it up a little bit. So you'll never know that the trunk of it actually doesn't go all the way down. So now I'm going to take that little raccoon, the butterflies, and the little clouds, and this is from the Butterfly Kisses Stamps and Die Set. And I went ahead and stamped those. Then I'm going to take the little turtle, and this is from the Get Well Before and Afters and the matching dies. Then I have the little bunny. And this is from the Some Bunny stamp set, which I have used quite often. And the coordinating dies. And then this is the little bow. I love this little bow from the Extra Amazing Easter set. And finally, the little flag. And this is from the Elfie Selfie set and the coordinating dies for that as well. So now that we have everything stamped, I'm going to go ahead and run those little pieces. I cut them into small little sections here so I could run them through my uh, Tim Holtz Sizzix Sidekick machine. I've attached the die for each one with my purple tape and run them through. So I went ahead and did that for each of these here. And you can see all of our little pieces are all set. So for this little turtle, I'm going to be using the light green and the deep green, and these are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens, and the blender pen, and the light pink. So I'm going to start off with my lighter green and add the darker. And I'm going to be blending with that new blender pen that I just got, and I want to make sure it's clean. And I know I said this in a previous video, but I love this blender pen. It really works well. It's not quite as wet as a water brush might be. Although I still like the water brush when you're going for a certain effect. But this I thought I had a little bit more control with these smaller pieces. And it's got a, it's very, it's wet, but it's not too, too wet. And it blends really easily. It, it's very smooth and easy to use. So now I'm just adding some darker color here and just doing a little bit of shading, not a lot. I simply colored in that little section of the turtle there. And then I'm going to do a little bit more blending down here with the darker and then the lighter shade. And then I did want to add a little pink to the little turtle's cheeks there. So I'm going in with that pink color and just slightly blending that out a little bit. You can see how cute he is. Now I have the light gray and the gray brown. And we're going to use that pink again as well. I'm going to go ahead and color in the little bunny. Starting off with the lighter gray and then coming in with the gray brown. And I kind of wanted him to be a little bit darker down towards the bottom there. Again, back with the blender pen, cleaning it off, making sure I didn't have any of that green color on there before I get started. And then just blending those two together.
a little bit of pink for the cheeks there. Just blending that out a little bit. And then a little pink in his in the ears as well. So that one's all set. So now we want to take light pink, flesh color, brown, and ochre. And we're going to go ahead and color in this little raccoon. And I'm starting off with the ochre color. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the brown, which I think has like a little bit of a reddishy brown tint to it. So it's perfect for this little critter here. And then I'm going to go ahead and blend those out. Just kind of pulling that darker color in. And when I'm coloring in the little critters, I like to use kind of a little bit of a circular motion. Uh, just to make it look a little bit more like the fur would look. Now I'm just going to do the same thing on the tail here, just blending that out. Just kind of pulling the color here from the, the base of his tail up towards the end. And then I'm going to do the little top of his head here. Just continuing. And now for the little area of the face there, I use the flesh color and the ochre. And I'm just doing the lighter one first and then pulling in the darker color just a little bit here, just for a little bit of color, a little bit of shadowing. And then I'm adding that pink to his cheeks and just blending that out a little bit. And now he's all set. So the, for the clouds, I'm going to use the light blue. I'm just going around the edge of the cloud a little bit here. And cleaning off my blender pen, I'm just going to blend that in just a little bit. Just to add a little bit of color to these, these clouds. And I did the same thing for all three of those. Now for these little bows, I'm going to use orange and wine red. I'm starting off with the orange. Then I'm going to apply the wine red kind of in the darker areas there and then I'm just going to pull those two together now I did want the uh, shadowing to be a little darker so I came back in with the wine red and I'm just going to do the same thing without adding any orange just pull that red in you can see that you get a little bit more of a shadow there. Just keep blotting off the color. If you want to remove color, you can just go and blot it off on a paper towel. I just love these little bows. So now with the lemon yellow and the orange, I'm going to do these three little butterflies. Just the lemon yellow all over, a little bit of orange down the center of the body there, and then I'm just pulling those two colors together. And I went ahead and colored all three the same exact way. And for the little flag, I'm going to use my Jelly Roll uh, black gel pen. And I'm just going to create like a flag, like the, 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 the racing flag. So I'm going to just make little a little checkerboard on here. And then I'm going to color in every other square on this. And do be careful with this pen because it does stay wet longer than you would think. You may want to heat set it or just set it aside. Just try not to touch it for a little while. These pens are a little bit wet, but when they dry, it's a nice jet black. So now I'm going to take my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen in the Crystal Clear, and I'm going to uh, just glitter the clouds, the bows, and the little butterflies. And I don't know if you can see that there, but it adds a nice little sparkle. Now for the little raccoon, I'm going to cut a little slit between his uh, little paws there. And I'm adding a little bit of glue, and I'm going to tuck that flag down in there between his paws. So he's like holding this little uh, racing flag here. And then I'm just going to put glue down this right down the center of his body there and glue that down because I don't want glue anywhere else just on that panel just on that frame panel 
And now for the little turtle, I'm going to add a little bit of foam mounting tape and pop him up a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure that he's where I want him to be inside this little frame. And then just press him in place. And for the little bunny, I'm just going to glue that down flat. So I'm just applying a little glue down towards the bottom of him there. And I'm gluing him in. And now for the little clouds, this larger one I'm just going to glue down. And for the other large one, I'm going to put a little foam mounting tape on it. And I'm just going to put it down towards the bottom of that cloud. And I'm putting foam mounting tape on this little one as well. Now for that one, the larger one, I only put the tape at the bottom because I want it to stick up over the top of this box a little bit. And I don't want any of the tape to show or to be uh, exposed on the back of that cloud. Now for this one, I'm just going to tuck it down inside this uh, little shadow box and press it into place. Now I want this little banner. This is the Bunting Borders. And again from Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to die cut it twice, once out of the Bristol Smooth and once out of this really rainbow scallops paper, which is a brand new petite paper pad from Lawn Fawn. And I only need four of the little banners, so I'm cutting off the excess. And then these little pieces that I cut out of the really rainbow scallops paper, I'm going to apply those to the front of this little banner. So I'm putting glue on just the little triangular area of the banner. And then I'm going to cut off these little triangles from the rainbow paper and I'm just going to glue them on. And this is going to give a really cute little uh, color, you know, just a nice little color, um, pop of color to these little banners here. And now with the orange zig pen, I'm just going to color in that middle section of the banner. You certainly could have just cut the banner out of orange paper, but I wanted the color to be an exact match to what we had already done. So now I'm taking an acrylic block and these sentiments, this is the Simply Sentiments set, set from Lawn Fawn, and I want to just get certain letters. The alphabet that I had, the letters were a little too big. So I'm going to show you a little trick to get the letters that you need. So find a, a set of sayings that are, are the right size. And then we're just going to grab the letters that we want from these sentiments. So I took the congratulations. And I want to do the word race on this banner. And I'm using my post-it tape. This is the one inch tape. And I'm going to mask off all the other letters that I don't want. So using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink, I'm going to ink up the letter R, remove the post-it tape, and stamp just that letter. And now you can see I have the letter R stamped. Now you want to make sure you clean the stamp really well. I'm using my stamp chamois to clean that off, and then I'm blotting it dry. Now I'm going to mask off the letter A. I'm going back and putting my masking tape down, my post-it tape. And then I'm going to ink up the letter A. Make sure to remove the post-it tape. I've done that with forgetting to remove it before on other projects. So you want to make sure you remove that first. And then stamp the, the next letter. And again, cleaning it off really well, blotting it dry. I'm going to go to the letter C. Now, congratulations didn't have the E that I needed, so I'm going to grab the Feel Better Soon sentiment. And I'm going to put that on my acrylic block, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the letter E. Just masking it off, removing my post-it tape, and stamping that. So you can see how quick and easy that is to do. Now I want to glue this little banner up towards the top of my shadow box. So I'm going to put a little glue on each side of those little tabs there. And then I'm just going to glue that in place. 
Now don't worry too much about the ends here because I want to put my little bows there. So for these little bows, I want to prop them up, but I want to make sure the adhesive is only on that panel. So for this one, I'm putting the, the foam mounting tape only on the left side of the bow so that it doesn't show from the back side there. And then for this one, I'm going to put it only on the right side of the bow. Again, because when we close, when we lay this flat, we don't want that adhesive to stick on the side of the panel. So we only want to put it on the front side of the panel here. Now I have my three little butterflies and I'm just going to press with my finger just to press them down and pop up the wings a little bit. I'm adding glue just down that center part of the butterfly and then I'm going to attach it to my frame. And for this, these tiny ones, again, folding the center and then I'm going to position this one on that little fence post here. And for the last one, I'm just going to pop it in the back part of the uh, shadow box onto that cloud back there. I just thought it would be fun to have this little cloud in the background kind of sticking up over the top of the shadow box. So here we have our little shadow box card and you can see how cute it is with all these little pieces and all these layers that we have. And again, it was inspired by the children's book, The Tortoise and the Hare, which I always loved. I love that whole concept of slow and steady really does win the race. And so I think it would be great for a little display item or even a little a card for encouraging someone. Um, you can always stamp the sentiment on the back panel of this before you do your assembly or just attach a piece of cardstock back there and stamp your sentiment on that. Um, just a little footnote that the shadow box would normally fit in a standard A2 size envelope, but with all these additional pieces, it still does lie flat, but it would probably most likely fit in an A6 size envelope, which is 4.5 by 6.5. So just keep that in mind as you're adding these layers here. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thank you so much for visiting and have a great day. Bye-bye.